Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing great. Hopefully y'all had a great weekend. Uh, by the time you're watching this video, hopefully Shane Crabtree is in gold one, which is my goal. That is my goal is by the end of this video, the end of this 3v3 takeover that we get him from yellow and silver four to moving up into gold one. We have three and a half hours left. So basically what happened, Shane reached out to me to do a 3v3 takeover, which if you're interested as well, it's going to be linked down below. Click the link, message me on discord. We can get some things figured out. But I also want to offer something that hopefully somebody can find some good use of, which is I'm going to be doing a giveaway for a free 3v3 takeover that's going to be streamed probably on Thursday or later. So basically, if you're interested, type in 3v3 help in your comment and you'll be entered to win and I'll be drawing the winner Wednesday. And then once I get into contact with you, we'll figure out if Thursday or a different day during streaming is going to work best. Twitch or YouTube, not for sure where I'll be streaming, but just pay attention Look at your comments, see if I reply. So that'll be drawn Wednesday. But today, I figured, hey, if I'm going to be doing this takeover anyways, might as well share this with you guys. So this account, 9 million player power, but it's very, very progressed as far as champions. Shane likes to pull shards, okay? So on my account, I feel like my gear and my champions are pretty well progressed. I'm in gold four. I would love to get into showing some more variety as far as where accounts are this account has a lot of champions but the gearing is not as flexible okay we have a little bit more restrictions as far as the gear there's no bolster gear there's no instinct gear the savage gear on this account is not really where it should be um well once we do some more fire night it's going to be amazing right so he has some places to farm some lethal gear all that kind of stuff we have some decent nuking stuff but it could be better so basically what i'm trying to say is what that while we have tons of great champion options tons of golden champions it's not going to be just as easy as you know throw in the s tier champions throw on the s tier stone skin bolster instinct savage lethal whatever it may be and they get an amazing team same thing with reaction there's not a whole lot of reaction gear on this account which i think will make for a pretty decent showcase because when you don't have reaction gear your ideas on building 3v3 or arena teams in general that are go second or slower teams changes a lot. On my account, I have a decent amount of reaction, so I'm able to get away with some things that other people may not be able to. Like my Duchess is super, super slow, which is no problem because she has reaction, a lot of survivability. Whereas an account like this, great champions, but no reaction, really. And we have a little bit of reaction, not a whole lot. Not a whole lot of blessings on all the champions. Some champions do, some champions don't, but it's gonna change the builds of these champions. So let me jump in here. I have some teams I've been working on today. So the ones you see are probably what I'm going to be working with. Actually, just kidding. These teams right here are kind of what he already had. So I've been working on some of the um, arena setups on Shane's account for a little while now. But basically what he was running is a team set up kind of like this. Okay, so this first one is a speed team. Speed teams are great. On defense, they're not so good because they're very easily countered, especially with a Hegemon. Um, but in general, I would rather get a more sustainable go second team but what i'm going to do is i'm going to build two different teams this middle one i do like quite a bit i'm going to build two different teams that hopefully he's able to decide hey i want the speed team this time or hey i don't want the speed team this time sometimes speed teams work amazing and then sometimes not so good. it's not so good so this very bottom setup this speed versus this team it's going to be fine right we have hegemon a lot of nukes we should be okay but sometimes you're going to find matchups that bringing a speed team against may just not be the best idea like this one. I don't really want to run a Hegemon into a Hegemon. Yeah, we may be faster, but it's kind of just playing with the RNG game. And I'm not very interested in that. I would rather go something like this, where we have a Tormen. It's going to probably freeze somebody. And then we have a Siffy preventing Rotos from ever being debuffed anyways. And it should be a very good setup. So what I'm going to do, this team right here is actually one that I built earlier. Um, which, like I said, he was using this one right here. Which this team down here is basically a speed team. We have a fast Siffy. We have Arbiter. We have Solus and Rotos. It's an okay team. We got some changing of gears to do, changing of champions builds. This team I like quite a bit. The Duchess is fairly fast at 236. Just kidding. I thought she was faster than that. So she's 236. Not great, but not super slow either. Warlord is 280. He's in stone skin gear with some pretty decent accuracy. I do like that build quite a bit, which I mean, I'm the one who built it. So I hope I would like it because it was a while back. Um, but I do like that build, especially in this team. It kind of makes the enemy have to bring a champion of decent speed, which kind of counteracts this team. Well, we'll get into that in a little bit later. Necrit, pretty decent build. I do need to change it because he's not in shield set. I wish he had bolster. I may switch it to stone skin. We don't have a ton of stone skin options. And then Kanjafon. 
which I may need to check his gear. This top team will be left alone. I'll try to limit using champions from this team so that he's able to swap it in and out pretty easily because the goal is to give him plenty of options that could be basically fully autoed doing 3v3 because, I mean, let's be honest, Tag Team Arena takes forever to actually do, and if you have to sit there and manual every single fight, it's going to be a little bit of a headache. So I like to have teams that are pretty auto-friendly, pretty easy to match up, ideally, is my goal. So what I've done is I actually sent him some teams earlier that I was interested in building. These right here are the three teams that I plan on building for Shane. Let me go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. Actually, let's make it full screen. So here we go. This first team up top is, is one that he already has, of course. I think it's a really good team. I like this quite a bit, and you'll see it in just a little bit in action. The second team I think is pretty interesting. We have a control Hegemon, Duchess to mitigate some damage, plus give us the increased attack, which the Rodos isn't quite able to get enough damage on his gear yet. So having that increased attack, I feel like is very important. If we could get really good Savage gear or really good lethal gear, then maybe we could just do it Siffy. But I think that increased attack is going to be so, so helpful. Um, plus the damage mitigation and having an extra res champion. Sifi is going to prevent Rotos from ever getting debuffed. And if he does, she's just going to cleanse it. So Sifi is an amazing champion. And if you have her, might as well use her, right? Like I said, this account has some pretty crazy champions. So we got to take that for what you may, okay? I'm going to try to spread out on the variety of accounts. But this one has some pretty good options. And these are some hopefully interesting teams. This one at the bottom, I'm super excited to build it. I think it's going to have some amazing synergies, and I'm really hoping it plays out the way that I'm thinking it's going to. So we have Rotos just doing some damage, single target stuff. Actually going to be a pretty good Warlord counter. We're going to build him fairly fast, uh, hopefully against Warlords. If they do a lot of damage, he's going to boost his turn meter, cycle around through things fast enough that he can get back to that hard-hitting A3 ability, and then just keep the enemies dead. Hegemon could be a nuke Hegemon, but we're going to try out Control first just because that's what it's built for his fast speed team. And this bottom team, this is where I think it's going to be really cool. We're going to build Mighty Uko in a stun set, going pretty fast. And the idea is that Sifi is also going to be fairly fast, boosting into Mighty Uko, allowing us to go against Tormans without any issue. Um, Hegemon's not going to be a great team for this one to go against, but ideally, Sifi's going to boost, giving our two defense-based damage dealers pretty nice boost to their overall damage, making everybody more survivable. But the thing that I think is really cool, we have Valkyrie, who makes the enemy not super encouraged to bring buffs. If you bring buffs against Valkyrie, she's going to reduce their turn meter. She's going to boost her turn meter as well. And then we have Tormin that is basically making the enemy want to bring buffs because if you don't have block debuffs, then your team's just going to fall apart against the Tormin. But it's kind of like, okay, if I bring buffs, Valkyrie's countering me. If I don't bring buffs, then I'm having no chance because Tormin's going to counter me. And then we have Mighty Uko. They bring buffs, Mighty Uko gets rid of them, and they get frozen, and they get provoked. And we have counterattack with some more attacks from Tormund. I'm hoping this team is going to be a lot of fun. Stun set Mighty Uko. I really think this team is going to be an absolute nightmare as far as control goes. And it's pretty similar to a team that I run on my main account. But I have Hefrak and Valkyrie with Mithrala and Uko. So it's similar in the control aspect. We have Hex from Mithrala, but it's also quite a bit different. So as far as champions getting built, we're going to have to put some blessings on a few of these champions. The Sifi, I already know, is going to get Polymorph. Polymorph is an absolutely amazing blessing um, in the arena in general. If an enemy places uh, or tries to place a debuff on you, you have a chance of sheeping them. It's a pretty high chance I mean, from each individual debuff. And uh, yeah, it's an absolute nightmare to deal with. So we're going to put that on Sifi. We're also going to put Lightning Cage on Rodos to hopefully protect any buff that he does have from actually being removed or stolen. Plus, Lightning Cage just seems like the best level 1 blessing you can put on most damage dealers. So, Lightning Cage, there we go. Same thing for Kandrafon. Lightning Cage once again. Now, for the Hegemon, we may put Polymorph on him, to be honest. Because I think Polymorph could be decent in that team that he's going to be in. Which is this one right here. So, Polymorph on him, Polymorph on Duchess, protecting these two champions. That could probably pr be pretty good. If it was a damage dealing Hegemon then Polymorph is not going to be good. Maybe i save him for a little while. Necrit is going to be, once again, a Polymorph. I think amazing. We can always change it if the uh, Blessings get nerfed too much or changed too much in the next update, but the first change is free, which is very, very nice. So we have those. Kandrafon, he has Lightning Cage, perfect. We have a few more to do, right? Duchess did already do hers. Yes, Duchess right here. Let's go ahead and get Polymorph on her. So Polymorph on Duchess. This will make a big difference in the arena. I mean, Polymorph can really throw off enemy teams significantly. Arbiter, we don't need anything on her just yet. 
Solus, we're not going to be using him at the moment. Georgid, I do really like this champion. He's really good. But I feel like if you're going to use him on offense, you kind of need a lot of protection. We kind of need bolster. We really need some reaction. We need something to really protect him. A Necro protecting him is great. But Kandrafon's just going to be better in that first team because Kandrafon's going to be tanky by himself. And then you add Necro on top of that, and now he's even more tanky. So maybe get George in there sometime, but not just yet. And you may have noticed we do have a few Warlords on this account, but the gear is kind of limited. So building multiples of the same champion in a very similar build, I'm not for sure if we're quite ready for that. And I think these three teams we have are going to be very, very auto-friendly. So as far as these teams go, the second team I already know is fully taken care of. The only champions that may need to change is the Kandrafon, depending on how the gearing goes. I think we can squeeze a little bit more damage out of him, but everybody else should be okay. So the main ones I'm going to be focused on are these bottom two, which we'll go over the first one as well. So this team right here, the Duchess, I think could be adjusted just a little bit. She has a lot of resistance and we may be able to tweak that just a little bit. The Hegemon's okay. The Sifi can probably be adjusted just a tiny bit as well. And the Rhodos, we can definitely fix a lot of this stuff um, because I want him to be hitting a lot harder than what he is currently. This team right here, Mighty Uko is just now taking a six star. We just now fully booked him as well. Um, which is not CVC, but that's okay. We have plenty of legendary books on this account. Um, Shane already said so. He already gave me the approval. Um, Sifi is pretty decent build here. So I might try to squeeze a little bit more speed out of her, but so far she's doing pretty decent. Torment is not geared. Valkyrie is not geared how I want her to be right now. So ideally, I'm going to get Torment to be 350 plus accuracy, maybe. Valkyrie, very similar. And then Mighty Uko is going to be as much accuracy as much speed as we can possibly get with stun gear, ideally pretty tanky. And then Tormund is going to be kind of a damage dealer as well as Valkyrie. Tormund counters on the A1 with an AoE ability. Valkyrie places the counterattack. Mighty Uko does an A1 ability, AoE with stun gear. It should be crazy as far as the control. So that's the team I'm going to build first. Let's go ahead, jump in here, and see how Mighty Uko is currently looking. So I know right now that his Brogni has some pretty good speed gear on. Some pretty fast stun gear, that is. Some pretty fast speed substats on his stun gear. I'm not going to go through all these champions, but what I do a lot of times is I either throw it into the Hell Hades Optimizer or I just check out the pieces myself. Kind of a mix, especially on accounts like this where all the pieces of gear may not be rolled up yet. Four star glyphs, we're going to try to get at least, okay, plus two would have been ideal, but plus four is even better. So I'm going to take it from Brogni. Brogni doesn't need the speed gear on the stun set. So this is no problem. I'm going to try to get a plus four here. I don't want to use too many of his glyphs, but I think this is going to be just massive as far as the value this is going to bring to him. So there's one more piece with a good speed. Hopefully, maybe some speed boots. I've already looked into this, so I kind of know what I'm looking for here. So don't just know. Don't just think I'm seeing this and like, oh, this is what I'm going for. This is perfect. Just throwing some random pieces on there. I've already looked through this stuff, okay? Um, now the next fastest speed piece is going to be this shield right here. He has some pretty nice rolls on those pieces. Now, when it comes to perception boots, which is going to be ideal because we want to get as much accuracy as we can, we have six star on allure, which is actually really good, but she's in fire night. This fully ascended is going to be perfect. It would be perfect for him, but I don't think we can use that. Kyoku, I'm not for sure if she's being used anywhere. I know Tumisia is. I can't imagine Kyoku is. Maybe for the arena. Let's try that on. See if we can find a weapon with really good speed as well. Like I said, I'm looking for like 280 plus as far as the speed goes. I know this weapon was good. You guys can't really see these stats. My bad. But you can see the stats over on the right side, which is the, the most important part, right? Now, as far as the banner, we really need some accuracy. Accuracy with speed is going to be ideal. Let's go ahead and see if we can get a double roll on the speed. I'm going to try to make the gearing fairly fast because we have, we have a, lot of, a lot of champions to go through. Ideally, be six star. We have 19 million silver, so it's pretty pretty slim on the silver. If we can get a double roll, that's going to be huge. Okay, no double roll. Can't roll it to 16. Don't have the silver to be doing that. Double, please. Nope, no double. So if we get a double, it's going to make it pretty easy. I don't think he has anything equipped on anybody. A double on speed, ideally. Let's see. Okay, we do have something equipped on Tumisia. That's actually a really good piece that we can't use, unfortunately. This is acceptable. Tumisia's is better, quite a bit better. But she's doing his spider team, which is pretty fast as well. So I'm not going to steal it from her. I know for sure he's using that. Um, here, let's go accuracy. Hopefully we have a triple roll. At maybe triple roll be sick. 
Double roll will be okay. Double roll accuracy with HP main stat preferably. We can roll a few of these just to see. I don't really want crit damage, to be honest. I'd rather HP, maybe defense if we could. Tumisia might have to check her out because she may just have too much accuracy. She has a double roll accuracy on that piece. Hmm. HP, we'll take a look at her because that's, that's actually some really good stuff that could be swapped over to him. Like, really good stuff. This is perfect. This is a beautiful ring for Maida Uko. Wow. Triple roll reaction piece. Wow, that is so, so good. So 268. I'll go ahead and equip this. It's probably the best we're going to find. I'll go look at Tumisia real quick. Because I got a feeling that she could be adjusted a little bit. So she's 228, 413 accuracy. She has more accuracy than she needs. So we'll take that necklace from her, put it on Mighty Uko. This is going to be more valuable to him. He's currently sitting 268. It's not bad. 268 with uh, almost 300 accuracy. Get these fully glyphed up. We should be in a pretty good spot. So we'll try this out for now. Being in gold, almost gold one, this should be okay. It should, it should be okay. I'm not going to take these to 16 just yet. We will put some four-star glyphs on these things. He has plenty of four-star glyphs. But I don't want to take them all the way up to 16 because we're very low on silver. So I like to be very mindful about silver whenever I can because my silver is bad. And I don't want everybody else's silver to be bad also, you know? Those boots could be easily upgraded, though. I may have, We may have to do that. Maybe not in this video, but I may have to tell Shane that, hey, those, those boots on alert, dude, those are some pretty sick boots. I may have to switch them over. This video is going to be long as well, guys. Just to go ahead and give you all a heads up. It's going to probably be a pretty long video. So here we go. Hopefully you guys like it. Let me know down in the comment section. Do you like these longer videos? I mean, we're 20 minutes in and we haven't even done an arena match yet. So here we go. We got 308, 275. Pretty impressive, I'd say, as far as the masteries go. Let's go ahead and pick out some things. We're going to do the accuracy for sure. Then we're going to pick up the extra 20 accuracy when this champion has no skills on cooldown. Exactly. Um, now here... We could pick up some extra accuracy per enemy alive or some turn meter boost whenever a debuff is removed or expired. So he places one buff, right? He places one buff, being or two buffs technically, block damage if he reses and increased speed. So we'll do this one and this one. A lot of times what I do is use Raid Bro, which is so, so helpful. Actually, let's go ahead and do that. So we'll use this and this here and here. Lore of Steel for sure. Uh, I could do Evil Eye, but we have enough turn meter reduction on that team. We shouldn't need it. Uh, down here, we'll pick out some debuff extension for sure, and probably do the buff extension also. Uh, and then over here, we can pick up resistance or let's do defense to get the reduced damage from AoE abilities. With Duchess on the team, right? We should be really good. No, no Duchess, so that's going to be even better. Uh, so here, we can go Resurgent. If we lose too much HP, we'll remove a debuff, which could be really, really helpful. Uh, we don't need so much to shadow heal because we have heals coming from Sifi every turn anyways. So we'll hopefully this is going to be nice. Both these are really good though, honestly. It's kind of up in the air. Maybe the shadow heal is better than the 16 extra accuracy. Let's do that. Yeah, let's go to the shadow heal. And then we'll go delay death, turn meter boosting. And now here we can go fierce on presence for some increased chance to land that stun. If we get polymorphed on the road, it's going to even benefit that even more. Uh, or we could go Evil Eye. Now here, we don't actually need this extended. We need the Sniper, because Sniper is going to help us land that decreased attack from the A1 ability. So Eagle Eye or Fearsome Presence, we're currently sitting at, let's see, currently have 318 accuracy. We're going to have a little bit more. We'll be about 350 after everything's fully glyphed and the uh, Mastery right here works. So yeah, we should be we should be okay. Let's see. What's Ray Bro doing? Okay, I actually messed that up. So I didn't plug everything into Ray Bro, which is unfortunate because now I'm missing a mastery right here. I don't have both of these. Let's go ahead and just run it as we have it. We're not going to use a free reset yet, but maybe later on. Pick up this one, pick up this, pick up Cycle of Revenge, and then I think we're going to go with, I think Fearsome Presence. I think having the chance to land the stun at a higher rate is going to be better since we're going for a lot of control on the team. But it's something that can easily be changed down the road if we're noticing a lot of resists. So this top bracket, let's see what we're want, wanting here. Extra heals, um, this champion receives, which could be really good. Or yeah, let's just go with that. Increased amount of healing and the value of shield buffs this champion receives by 5%, which Sifi's gonna be doing consistent heals, so that should be very good. 
So right now we're looking at 276, not too bad of speed. Should be pretty close in speech with that Sifi. And then we got a gear Valkyrie and Tormund. So I'll show you guys what Tormund currently looks like, and then we'll jump into actually building that champion. So Tormund is currently sitting at this kind of gear. Not much damage. And then as far as masteries go, nothing. So let me jump in here, build him out, and I'll be right back with his complete build. So the Tormund build is now finished, and we are in a mismatched set for sure. But that's okay. We have the almost 300 accuracy, which should be pretty decent. Um, definitely going to get some more if we can. Let's glyph it wherever possible. But so far, this is looking pretty good. If we get some better crit damage gloves in the reactions or the uh, perception set, that'd be amazing. Crit damage with some good crit rate rolls. But I don't think we're that lucky just yet, unfortunately. But that'd be nice. An extra, what, 40 accuracy? Would be very, very good. Plus some extra speed. We can't take it from the man eater. We're right at 100% crit rate, so it's perfect. Um, but 100% crit rate, 252 crit damage, which is actually very nice. Good defense. Plus we have Siffy given increased defense, and the masteries are here. We have Helm Smasher at the very bottom, but this is the setup I've gone. Extra damage, some extra healing, and this should be a pretty decent setup. Uh, we could definitely get a higher banner. This one has some good speed. The It's only five star though. We could get some extra accuracy. So we have to see how it goes. But the next champion I want to build is going to be the Valkyrie. So Valkyrie is also going to be built to do some damage. I've already glyphed her, or already uh, redid her masteries, which before they were for more of like a clan ball setup. And now they are Helm Smasher, some accuracy stuff as well. Very similar, actually the exact same copy as my main Valkyrie. But this Valkyrie, we're going to build her to be a little bit faster to constantly get around to hopefully that A2 ability. And we're gonna build her to still have 100% crit rate, ideally 200% crit damage, probably 350, 400 accuracy, but I'm gonna see what I can get. I still want her to hit fairly hard, but I wanna make sure that she's constantly doing this turn meter reduction stuff. The teams we take her against shouldn't have very high resistance anyways, um, but I do wanna make sure she's constantly getting around, keeping that counter attack up, messing up their turn meters, and the whole nine yards. So I'm gonna get in here, change her gear, and I'll be right back as soon as this is finished. Here is the finished Valkyrie build. This was a pretty quick one, but I think it's going to be okay. The HP is looking a little bit low. The defense isn't as high as I would like for it to be. We can, we do have the possibility of making this Valkyrie a plus two Valkyrie. So we're going to see how she does right here. May go in there and make her a plus two later on. What to see though. Um, but as far as her damage stats, everything's looking pretty decent. She has 351 accuracy, which was the goal. She has pretty good crit damage, 100% crit rate, of course. 226 speed. We could make her a lot slower, but I want to make her fairly fast to make sure she gets this up as soon as possible. The sooner the better, because the sooner we get this up, the faster Mighty Uko can counterattack with his A1. Tormund can counterattack with his A1. Valkyrie, same thing. Sifi, the team should work out very well once we get this up soon. Plus, that big shield should be very, very nice. So let me go ahead, put these teams in here. So we have Team 1, Team 2... And then this team is not built yet. We need to, actually, I think we only need to fix the Rotos. So let me go there and do that. Let me fix the Rotos, and then we'll do some matches. The Sifi can be changed probably as well. The other Sifi is sitting in, let me see. But her gears should be okay. It should be good enough to actually test, get a few test runs in, and then we can adjust her as needed. We don't have very much stone skin. I'll show you guys a stone skin in just a second. So if you're wondering why I haven't equipped anybody in stone skin yet, that's why. We have very, very limited stone skin. Like, this this is basically all of it. So if we need to put somebody in there, we can. But so far, it's going to be difficult, to say the least. We could get one turn of stone skin. Maybe on the C feet makes a lot of sense. But it's going to be very slim picking. So I'm going to go ahead and re-gear this Rotos. My goal with this Rotos is to make him 200 plus speed. Ideally, like 250% plus crit damage. Good HP and good attack. That's going to be my goal. Flat HP on the accessories. Attack percentage on the accessories. I actually rolled a really good piece earlier today, which I'm going to have to put on him. It was an HP banner, triple or double roll into attack. I think this was the best one I did. Let me make sure. Yeah. So HP banner, double roll attack. You can't see it. 17% with a 5% glyph. That's actually a really good piece. With Rotos, it's kind of difficult to run the optimizer, which is what I've done for the other champions. But on Rotos, it can be a little bit tricky because he, he needs HP, he needs attack, and sometimes the optimizer makes it in a way that if you was to go in here and roll it yourself and check out some things, probably be a little bit better. So for the ring, let's do HP and then attack percentage. See if we have any good ones. Rotos is the only champion who's going to be using something like this. 
HP with attack percentage. I mean, nobody else does that. So we have this ring, which is pretty decent, less than what we currently have. So let's equip this banner. We currently have an HP with a double roll attack. Okay, so this is perfect. So let me go up here, see what we can get on the top row. I think we're going to do some cruel stuff. I think I ran it earlier with speed. Let's see. So now the Rotos build is finished. Uh, we made a decent amount of improvements, but we've also lost some HP, which isn't great because Rotos does a lot of damage with his HP. But I think the boost in crit damage, the boost in attack, a little bit less HP, and uh, a lot more speed. Hopefully it's a net massive positive. Let me make sure everything here is looking correct. Um, I actually have my Rotos Masteries pulled up on my phone. So we'll compare them real quick. And I think I actually did his Rotos Masteries because they are exactly the same. So perfect. We have exact same Rotos Masteries, which is exactly what I was hoping to see. And uh, we definitely got some room to grow as far as the glyphs go. Extra speed there, which we will go ahead and pick up. Because Rotos going fairly fast is actually very, very good. Plus four speed. Come on, one more time. Don't make me waste all these glyphs. I hate that so much. Plus four speed. We've actually been getting pretty lucky. Let's get a nice attack percent glyph here. Plus two. Not what I wanted. Try one. Goodness gracious. These glyphs, man, they play hard to get. That is for sure. We can go ahead and glyph everything later on, but let me go ahead and test this. Before we start getting too glyph crazy, let's go ahead and test out to make sure this is all going good. Plus four again. Very nice. So 208 speed, which is actually pretty good as far as the speed goes. Some decent rolls on these pieces. Let's go ahead and get this one. Uh, five star glyph plus 5%. Let's see. It. No, plus one plus five. There we go. Beautiful. Plus 5%. Throw on some HP. I try not to use too many of the five-star glyphs because I know the Ramen 2 mission's coming up, which is partially why we're doing this takeover for him. And I said, let's wait, but I'm still glyphing some pieces. So we have some more glyph room to grow, but now we should have the teams pretty well built. So the Hedgy team is finished, I believe. The Torment team should be done. And the other one, this one, this one's good for sure. So as far as what teams we match up where, let's go ahead and figure that out. So this torment, honestly, with this team setup, we can kind of go with just wherever we want, to be 100% honest. We don't want a lot of AoE damage against Mortu, so we'll do the uh, Rotos team. This top one, Lockout with Warlord should be perfectly fine. And then this bottom one, this is going to be perfect. So we can probably just full auto this, to be honest. I will turn it on manual just because some people like watching it manual. Um, but we'll go ahead and get this started and see how this goes. So Warlord's going to be the fastest going before them, and now they are useless. Well, not really, because they resisted some of the stuff, which is okay, because Kandrafon just makes light work of most people, to be honest. We'll go ahead and kill Godseeker. Sandlash is going to do the protection. Not a huge deal. Protect Duchess, and then Kandrafon smacks. Now, this account has tons of room to grow and improve. We have Lethal Gear, Instinct Gear, Savage Gear. Any kind of defense ignore gear is going to be absolutely massive. Having any of that is going to be so, so good as far as equipping it onto a damage dealer. Um, getting bolster in the next forge pass is going to be so good. Picking up some reaction gear from CVC wins is going to be so, so good. There's a lot of small little things that can make this these teams go from probably being very good, we should definitely be able to get into gold one tonight, to gold four quality, basically. Unfortunately, Kandrafon got destroyed by the fear. Pretty crappy, but turning back on full auto, these teams are not going to be the fastest. So you can throw in the speed team for a faster victory, or you can just have the, uh, the slow and steady, consistent victories, which honestly should just be full auto. Set it, forget it, should be good to go. With Duchess, this team's not going anywhere. Like, it's going to be pretty difficult to actually kill this team. Speaking of, I actually need to throw these champions onto my defense, because these are going to be perfect for defense. Unfortunately, we had the Hedgy open with his A2. Not a huge deal, though Mortu could do his peril, which luckily the Duchess is going very fast, so he should just be perfectly fine. There we go. Valkyrie's locked out anyways, which is so good because now she can't do the counterattack stuff, which she's not going to be around that long anyways. Hopefully one shot, boom, one shot, perfect. Now, can we kill Mortu? I doubt it. Oh, okay. So before, that Rotos was not doing that whatsoever. It was very difficult to kill people. I was having a very difficult time. But now, the Rotos killed the Mortu with his A2, and I was not able to even kill a Mortu earlier with his A3. It's a massive, massive improvement. Which, I mean, is what happens when you go from no defense ignore to having some defense ignore and hopefully much better damage dealing stats. Very good speed. Cycling through his abilities very quickly. We'll just A3 and then A2 on the Mortu. Perfect. So, a little bit of a long match. 
but as long as we go 3-0, this is what I was looking forward to. This is what I wanted to see so badly. We got the freeze out already. We're provoked, which isn't great, but we hopefully keep freezing everybody, soak the damage from the Foley, use the A2 from Mighty Uko, boom, boom. Foley took the, uh, the stun, but then just got an extra turn. Not a big deal. So, Sills locked out. They have block buffs on themselves. Nothing's getting off. Tormund smacked them pretty hard. Valkyrie hasn't quite got a turn yet, but I know she was reducing their turn meter. Dang. Okay, they're skipping tons of turns. Foley's asleep. Valk comes in with the A2 ability. Okay, Tormund with his A3, right? I don't have a Tormund. Unfortunately, I missed the fusion, so I don't have a Tormund. Smacking them hard. See if he puts them to sleep. I mean, there's really not much they can do. There's, there's, there's just really not much they can do, right? Tormund wipes them out. There we go. 3-0. and I love it. Basically full auto. So as far as the damage dealt by everybody, there we go. We have some pretty good damage from Tormund. Decent from Valkyrie. Obviously, everybody else is a pretty expected spread. So here we go. Let's do a few matches with a little less talking, right? So Warlord team. Let's go put the Tormund up there. Pretty pretty decent counter. This team. Let's use Rotos. Rotos against Mortu should be good. We have Ultimate Death Knight, which is not great. So maybe we don't do that. Ultimate Death Knight can be a problem for Rotos, but eh, we'll, we'll leave it, okay? I don't really care that much. This bottom team, locking them out, should be good. So we should be okay. Pythion, Duchess, having Warlord to lock those champions out should be good. I may need to go in there and see if we can get more accuracy on that Warlord, because 515 seems to be resisted more often than I would like for it to. So there we go. We got a freeze out there, which this is exactly what I wanted to see. So this is so good. What you saw happen is they're probably speed tuned, right? The Warlord's not got his AI set up correctly, unfortunately. But my Valkyrie's reducing their turn meter from just the increased attack, allowing us to cut in. Hopefully, Mighty Uko can strip everybody, which is going to be absolutely amazing if that's the case. So there we go. Sifi boosted up enough to get cut in or cut in on them. Mighty Uko strips them. They're not doing much damage. We have A1's AoE abilities going off on two champions, both champions with some decent, some amazing crowd control potential. So that should be a very good team for defense. And then tons of room to grow. Bolster set. Going to be huge on Sifi. Oh my goodness. If you can get that on her, make her fast with Bolster, it's going to be incredible. Bolster could be good on Valkyrie. Get it good accuracy. It's going to be such a good set to have on her. There's so much room for that team to grow. Definitely looking forward to it. So we're just going to use the A2 on Ultimate Death Knight. Maybe he had a reaction. He didn't. But if he did, it would have hopefully... Oh well, this is going to be interesting. We proc that on Mortu which is not great. Uh, we, still, we do have Sifi still. We can keep the uh, AoEs off more too. We may be okay. They have no res champions. Tell for a big hit here. Boom, there we go. Ultimate Death Knight's dead, and we should be okay on the rest. Maybe. Keep the damage off the more two. That's going to be the goal, at least for right now. We can always sleep him. That is an option. We can definitely sleep the more two macabre. Okay, we stunned him, which is perfect. Counterattack into a stun. Very, very good. A3 from Rodos, maybe? Watch this block debuffs. It's going to be cleansed. Beautiful. A3 onto the Mortu with the Strengthen. Didn't kill him. He didn't have Resurgent, which is great. He didn't cleanse that stun, or at least it didn't proc, which is amazing. We're going to try to kill the Mortu this time. There we go. He's dead. And now the threat is resolved. There's no more problem. Mortu's gone. This team should be flawless. This is going to be a long video, but I enjoy mixing up my 3v3 experiences. Seeing it on this side of an account versus my account. A little bit different struggles, but a little bit different advantages as well. More champions to use on this account than my account, but a little bit less gear. But still, making stuff work. We can throw in the speed team as well, of course, right? Like, we could easily use a speed team, say, here or somewhere else. Let's go ahead and lock everybody out. Maybe everybody's locked out. So maybe it's not a bad idea to start building your champions and a little bit higher resistance. Unfortunately, that Kandrafon just absolutely destroyed me. This isn't going to be a... Okay, well, we destroyed their Duchess as well. Pretty fair trade, I guess, right there. Leo's going to proc unkillable, which is unfortunate. Oh, wait, just kidding. He's uh, he's only going to do his A1 because Warlord locked him out. Man, oh man, I, compl I completely forgot about that, honestly. So we kill Pythion, and now Leo can only use his A1 anyways. Well, it doesn't matter what we do here. We'll just protect Candrophon again, and we should be good to go. Man, Warlord is so over... So crazy. I mean, yeah, Leo, you, you killed my candy, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, let's go in here for the defense real quick. Make sure we get into gold one. Let's place the defense in here. This is the defense we, he was using recently. We're going to go ahead and keep this team. 
get rid of this one. So I got George's gear changed up just a little bit. So now he is looking at a little bit faster, which is going to be really good. He's got more attack, I believe, and more crit damage than before. His masters are looking pretty good as well. So maybe, uh, maybe having the lifesteal one would have been better. But I do think having him in this team is going to be very, very nice. So I'm going to try that out for just a few minutes. Actually, let's go ahead and take Kandrafon out. I think Georgia may be the better option for a lot of these matches. Uh, so we'll do one, two, and three. Don't have any presets actually set up yet. Uh, but as far as the teams go, this may actually be a really good setup for this one. No, not really. Uh, Cupidus doesn't really matter with uh, Warlord's lockout. Actually, Cupidus is a really good counter to Warlord. Um, this bottom team is probably going to be a good counter for here. I think this is a good setup. Maybe. That Warlord might be in Stone Skin. If he's in Stone Skin, then this isn't going to be great. The Ultimate Death Knight's annoying, but we'll see. We have a lot of AoE here. This top team, I think we use this setup, and then here we use this. Yeah, because George is going to be protected. George should just be able to one-shot that second team. So this should work out pretty well. Okay, A2, big A2 there. Buff up from Duchess. Okay, that's not good. Definitely looking a little bit, a little bit sketchy right now. The Valkyrie with her counterattack stuff. I didn't even notice the Valkyrie, to be honest. Which is quite the oversight, I'd say. A lot of counterattacks, which seems kind of weird, to be honest. Like, you have a Valkyrie alongside a Cupidus and Venus. It seems like it's kind of doubling up the roles. Because Cupidus is always going to counterattack if Venus is around. So having Valkyrie, now he's going to be counterattacking the same amount. I don't know. I don't, I don't really like, I don't like that too much. I don't think it synergizes that well. I think you ha could have a lot of different champions here. Maybe a Brogni if you want the shield. Um, yeah, there's definitely a lot of other options that are probably better. But yeah, I guess we'll see it depending on how this plays out, right? Okay, so the Cupidus is dead. Not the Cupidus, the, the Hegemon's dead. Their Cupidus will be dead very soon, though. As soon as I get a turn to do anything, hopefully. So counterattack, boom. Knew that was going to happen, though. And then Cupid is dead. So yeah. Not that difficult. Once that Stone Skin goes away, Cupid is going to be easy to kill. If he didn't have Stone Skin, he'd be even easier to kill. But with Stone Skin, he's going to do less damage, right? With Cupid, Venus teams just build single target champs. You should be okay. So here we go. Warlord should be able to lock everybody out. Locking out the Trunda, which is the most important. Now she can do nothing. <laughs> so now it's going to be way easier to deal with everybody. Kill the Arbiter. Hopefully A1 does a lot of damage. I'll probably just use the A2 here from Georgia, honestly. Or I can use the A3, just kill Lydia, and then kill everybody. Okay, that's that's pretty decent. Pretty decent compared to Kandrafon, who probably would have been difficult. So here we go. Testing this team against a different one. The Warlord didn't lock out, which is weird. Make sure you set your champions how you want them to do on your defense. If not, they're not going to do the right stuff. I can guarantee it. Especially if their AI is messed up like Warlord. Um, a lot of champions do not do the right things. Absolutely not. Team's not going to be super difficult. This is actually a pretty good counter to Ultimate Death Knight as well. Okay, we've got an hour and 28 minutes left before reset. Let's go ahead and refresh again. See if we can get some high-ranking people. There we go. Uh, Tormund, Tormund plus Kaimar. Let's go with this one. Maybe lock some people out beforehand. This top team. Let's go with... Let's see. So we'll go up here. And then we'll do this, okay? The Georgia team on the bottom... To go ahead and kill, hopefully, the Cardinal. If she has two turns, Stone Skin. If she has one turn, we'll just wait it out. But if two turns, we'll go ahead and kill her. This one. Is this the right team setup? Yeah, I think it was. Hopefully. We'll see. Uh, Rip Trunda, who is frozen. That's unfortunate. Was that a... 
Is that Ramen 2 just tried to lock me out? Who is that champion? I forget. I guess we're going to find out in a second. Just a sheep right now. <laughs> Irrelevant, basically. But I think they stripped everything, and they're about to place debuff. So I guess it was Ramen 2. Tormund Squishy. But with the shield from Valkyrie, should be pretty good. Obviously, it doesn't matter. He's going to revive on death, and he's still doing his passive. So that's really good. Trenda hits hard. Definitely hits hard. We do have a Force Affinity Champion, plus a fairly tanky champion in Siffy. Yeah, Ramen 2. Sweet. Kind of surprised to see a Ramen 2. I guess in Silver 4. It's not too bad. They've already hit their gold mission, so now they're chilling in 3v3 just a little bit. Deacon is taking, taking some damage. He's actually doing better than I'd expect. I guess that freeze is reducing the damage by 25% anyway, so it's going to be a little bit slower. There we go. Now, this team's going to be interesting, so we just do A2 here. Hopefully lock everybody out. Maybe get some stuns off. Doesn't matter. They can't do anything to Rotos that isn't going to be cleansed instantly anyways. So we just kill... Ideally kill Sifi. I don't think we can one-shot her. Actually, we can. That's very cool. I knew we could one-shot the Rotos, though. Or the uh, Kaimar. That's not a problem. Okay, pretty pretty sweet, I'd say. Pretty sweet. So now Rotos, go in one-shot somebody... Just kidding. That, that, that's asking for too much. A wanting one shot the Solus. Yeah, that's not going to happen, right? That, uh, that stun won't be staying around very long, though. That's for sure. Should have used the A3 there, not the A2. But it's okay, because now we can just A3 into A2 here. Or A3 into A1. Maybe into A2. There we go. One more, one or two more hits, and we should be good. Boom. Deleted. Lock everybody out. Okay, the Cardinal can't even do anything anyway, so we can just kill everybody. Two turns of unkillable, but it doesn't really matter because she's locked out. Which is something you want to make sure cannot happen. My Warlord has 500 accuracy, so definitely pretty easy to resist. So make sure your Cardinal has a lot of resistance. It could have been 3%. But I got a feeling she doesn't have enough resistance. So we'll try a few more. Uh, here we go. Torment team on top. Cardinal team right there. Counters Cardinal pretty well, so we'll keep it. And then, yeah, this all, this all should be good, actually. The Torment team on top may not be the best idea for what I brought up there because we don't have any block debuffs in that team. Actually, no, we do. We have Seafy. Never mind. Yeah, we're fine. We should get some stuns off, hopefully. There we go. Valkyrie reducing their turn meter. Now they're not going to get turned. Block buffs on everybody anyways. Stuns going off. Tormund counterattacking. Their, their plans just fell apart. Right in front of their eyes. Everything crumpled. Even if she reses. I guess stopping or killing Duchess would probably have been the ideal thing there. Because that res... Is going to make things take a little bit longer, but not a huge deal. Stun on the Lydia. A stun set plus fearsome presence is so good. Once you get the blessing, polymorph on Mighty Uko, he's going to be even better. He, he's, he's very good fast and stun gear because he's just constantly placing decreased attack. Block debuffs, decrease accuracy, stuns. So, so annoying. Okay. Decre or block the Cardinal again. So Warlord is a fantastic counter to Cardinal. Most of the time players build her with higher resistance though. I think it's very interesting why these are all not resisting. This is a pretty fast farm. Okay, that's unfortunate, except for the fact that uh, see if he's just going to cleanse Rotos anyways. Boom.
then hopefully get some pretty, pretty close. Place the stun, but Foley didn't like the stun, so he just got rid of it. No problem. And then Rip Ninja. All right, we got two more matches or so. Ten here. All right, so Warlord at the bottom. Be a good hedgy counter. Uh, Mighty Uko at the top. And then Ultimate Death Knight there. So Ultimate Death Knight, Mighty Uko. There we go. We've got some pretty decent setups as it is. I think that Mighty Uko at the top. I think our team setup is going to be a little bit better. I got a feeling that Mighty Uko is not that fast. Yeah, he's, he's not that fast. Didn't land any of those stuns that I was hoping to. That's okay, though. We got, we, got, we got a lot more where that came from. A lot more potential controls. The bomb popped, but I think he had decreased attack as it was anyway, so not a big deal. Provoke, freeze, stun. That's basically all of the crowd control effects except for sleep, isn't it? But did he have sleep? I don't know. Maybe. Okay, that petrification is not great. We really need to get rid of Mighty Uko. Put him to sleep. Nice. Maybe stun him. He's sweet. No stun. We really just need to kill him, to be honest. Good. Perfect. That, that's all that needed to happen. Just get rid of him. Mighty Uko, make sure you use your A2. Sometimes he prioritizes that A3, the increased speed, which is nice, but we have Sifi for that. She can do it next turn. Block debuffs, perfect. Nothing on Valkyrie, unfortunately, but we can strip him. Placing the stun on Mithrala, which is pretty cool. This may be the closest match we've had yet with this team. Unless we've lost one earlier. I don't think we did, but maybe. Do a single target ability here first. The sheep attack. All right. And now use the A2 from Valk. Get some counterattacks off. The sheep is a sheep killer? Nah, does, not quite. That'd been pretty cool though. The sheep killer Mithrala would have been pretty cool. Two hits. Boom. There we go. And then here is this team. Hopefully this goes pretty well. We just lock everybody out. Nobody can do anything other than their A1 abilities. Georgia should be perfectly safe. If Duchess takes a turn, no, we can't do that. If Ultimate Death Knight takes a turn, then we just one-shot him with that A3. If he doesn't take a turn, then I guess we just use the A2. Did he take a turn? He did. We can't target him though. A3, kill somebody, sweet. We got unkillable, that's nice. And then Necrit will just target Duchess. May actually be able to kill her, to be honest. Not quite, but very, very close. Very close. I kind of wish we had... Actually, no, it wouldn't have mattered. What order those two go in. Not too much, that is. She can't res anyways yet. She's locked. What? Just kidding. She, she can res. She definitely can res. So we'll just target this. Ultimate Death Knight's dead. A2. Boom. Everybody's dead. Do we have the A2 from Necrit? We sure do. There we go. And we have a victory. Almost. Yo, why did Valkyrie not die? I guess she was just counterattacking a lot. Because that Warlord's in Stone Skin. To be expected, right? But this is a pretty decent Warlord counter. Because Rhodos is going to get back through his turns relatively quickly. He should be a one-shot Ray, honestly, even with um, just the A1 ability. Extra turn. See, Rhodos, he's not hes not somebody you really want to go using a Warlord against because he cycles through his stuff so quickly, especially if he's getting hit pretty hard, getting that extra turn, everything like that. He moves through his cooldowns very fast. So now we can just kind of pick people off. Sleep to Lydia. We could use A3 on the Warlord. Use A2 on the Arbiter. Just kidding. We didn't one-shot the Warlord. I'm kind of surprised. But now we just do whatever we can. Sleep the Arbiter in just a second. Maybe get an extra turn. No extra turn. Not a big deal.
Sifi will just cleanse everything from Rotos. Remember, Sifi and Rotos, so good. He actually has two Rotos and two Sifi. But I think the setups we have is pretty nice. There we go. All right, so we got an hour and 16 minutes. We've been doing this for almost two hours now. Almost two hours of account takeover. All right, so look at these teams. Let's go ahead and try this one right here. I'm going to try to get a few more in before the reset actually happens um, because I don't really want him moving or staying in Silver 4, especially not having grinded this for the last three hours and almost three hours and a half. So here we go. We have this first team is going to be good with the Tormund. This team's good with the Hegemon. And this team's good with the Warlord. Actually, it's preset pretty nice. I don't think we should have any issue. I'm going to leave it on full auto, see how it works. Hopefully, it's pretty good. A lot of these teams, if you match them up pretty well, should do well full auto. You may have to interrupt it sometimes, but honestly, it should be pretty hands-free on a lot of them, at least. Not all the time, of course. you gotta you got to interrupt it because sometimes they do weird stuff. But these teams should be pretty good. There we go. Boom. First one, 15 seconds. Second one. Let's see. Hedge you with the A2. If he stuns people, it just makes it a world different. Trying to decrease attack. She's no threat, basically. We'll try to kill a Kaimar. With Rotos. There we go. And he'll kill Trenda next. Close. Extra turn. Okay, okay. Nice. Lady Kimmy should die very soon. There we go. Perfect. Like 30 seconds for that match. Lock out everybody. It doesn't matter who we hit. I mean, it's got to be Duchess, right? A3 into the A2. More 2 can't kill him because he got unkillable. I see people run Bulwark on More 2 a lot, but it doesn't actually give him a higher chance of proc peril. Here we go. Our green thing staying right there. We haven't gotten any closer, which is kind of making me a little bit sketched out. Not going to lie. All right, so... We're going to use the 50 gems. I want to make sure he gets in a gold one. Uh, with the Hegemon up top. Bottom team. Honestly, just do this Warlord and the team shut down. This team. Hedgy is not going to be as good. Um, we have block debuffs. Eh, Hedgy should be fine, both of them. Let's do this. Because at least the top team, Hedgy doesn't affect me as much as it does them. Because our Rotos gets cleansed. And I don't think they have any cleanser, do they? Mithrala on the second team. This team, they have no cleanser. So we should be good. Perfect. Yeah, we're fine. Except for the fact that we didn't target the Arbiter. Which is just weird. I just want to get rid of the uh, basher for real. I do some manual action here because for some reason it didn't target the Arbiter. I guess because she was not the lowest HP. Basher was the lowest HP. Lowest max HP that is. Now this one could be interesting. If we strip everything then it's going to be fine. She used her A2. She definitely should have used her A3 there. Maybe it was preset on the AI. Though it wouldn't have really mattered because she would have just frozen everybody anyways. There we go. Perfect. And this last team. Full auto, Warlord lockout, and then we should just... Okay, Warlord did not lock out Pytheon or Rector Draft. Interesting. Pretty decent hit there. Okay, okay. Doing some decent damage. With Rotos, this would never happen. There's no way we could do this with Rotos. Uh, Kandrafon would be very, very slow. You're going to see how this works on auto. This is a very tanky, very annoying, slow-going team for sure. 
They have no damage. They're, they have no win condition other than you leaving the match. I'm going to turn this off auto because on auto, I got a feeling it's going to last forever. Unless their Uko is built for damage, which I really doubt. We do have Warlord to lock them out, though, which is cool. There we go. Perfect. Killed one. If we can get some more turn meter, we can get Pythion killed as well. There we go. I think we're, I think we're good. Yeah. As long as we get... Okay. Ultimate Death Knight didn't die, unfortunately. He's going to res everybody, isn't he? This sneaky little pig. Okay, he didn't, thankfully. A sneaky, sneaky little pig. There we go. The big bad wolf. All right. Um, three and oh, perfect. Hopefully, okay, there we go. We got one win on defense, which is beautiful. Cupid's Venus team lost to our nasty team. Hegemon Warlord team lost to our Warlord team. Oh, it's because we were fast. Our Warlord and uh, Stone Skin wrecked them. Well, that's kind of weird. Wrecked them. Uh, the last team, Hegemon team, locked it. Well, that's kind of a weird one for them to match it up against. All right, so let's go to a few more. We have nine minutes left. Might as well finish it out, right? Might as well finish it out. And here we go. So, more two team. We're doing pretty good with the uh, Georgia team at the bottom. This one, this one, this one. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Full auto, baby. Let's see how it works out. Let's see how it plays out. Hopefully it does well. Um, but I guess we'll find out soon enough. So make sure we kill Arbiter first. We'll click her. I got a feeling we're not going to be attacked very often at all, though. On defense. I would love to see a lot of defense attacks. I think this defense just holds. There we go. All right, so here should be just a nasty team. No stuns, unfortunately. Against Duchess and things like that, we should definitely hold off that A2 until after that block debuff's ability. He is going fast, so it shouldn't take that long to get back to it, but it's definitely something I should remember to do. Rector's going to res for sure. It's going to be a fairly slow match. Let me see if I can turn it on manual and see if we can get any different action going. She can get the res there. Okay, so. Maybe she, I don't know if she's about to do block debuffs or not. YOLO. Hopefully she's not about to do it. We didn't strip anything anyways. Perfect. So we didn't waste it completely. I really need some stuns going off on Duchess or Rector, something like that. Just do this, not wake her up. Let her take her little snooze. Maybe kill her here. Sweet. I need to balance Rector's HP out as well. Basically. We can do this. Nothing crazy. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Perfect. Beautiful. Provoke, maybe? Nah, no provoke. Better slept though. We should be able to just single target our way through until she wakes up. Use that increased speed to not wake her up. Get her HP pretty low. Almost killed her. If we get the A2 from Valkyrie, we're done. We just win. Yeah, we should be good now.
Just that fine balance is all it is. It's all there is to it. With those two res champions plus Kyoku. Kyoku's pretty annoying. But she's not really... I don't think she's... I don't know. I haven't seen her used to be very good in the arena. But maybe I just haven't seen very many. Because she's pretty like... She's probably about like Seeker, right? I don't know. I don't know. I need to check her out. Maybe I can build something around her sometime. All right. Warlord, lock everybody out. All right, Duchess. Later. Uh, do I do... No, I don't. I let, let Mortu take his turn. Don't try to do anything just yet. Try to get rid of Brogni, maybe. He may have he may have proc peril already. That'd be weird, wouldn't it? Maybe we can do the A3 again. Kill more two. Nope, not quite. But, but uh not really close either, honestly. Not very close. And he's probably proc peril at this point. Didn't. I'm always assuming peril's around the corner though. There we go. Perfect. Kill the Mithrala. And then more two. Doesn't matter if he has peril or not. Because, uh, yeah. He's going to die. 24 points. Hopefully we got attacked again. I would love to see it. Nope. Did not get attacked again. And then let's go ahead and do one more match. This looks like a pretty easy one. Uh, we'll put a Hedgy on that second setup. We'll do this on the bottom and this on the top. That's good. That's good enough, I'd say. We should just be able to full auto this and under... I'm going to say two minutes. Under two minutes, full auto. Easy peasy. Tormund should just destroy him here, honestly. Just so, so much control. So much control. We really need to focus the Duchess here, though. I got a feeling Rotos wasn't going to do that. Block actives, though. That's really, really nice. That was the most useless thing that Kaimar could have done. Our extra turn. I kind of want to get Uka worked down because he can res. Unless he does his increased speed here. He can definitely res. I don't want it to happen. Because if he reses, the match is going to get really complicated. There we go. Perfect. Now, we didn't get to worry about that no more. Extra turn. I think we can probably kill Duchess with somebody else. We don't have to use Rotos. Okay, there's Uko. He's a sheep. Was a pig, now a sheep. Dang, Rotos is taking a beating, that's for sure. Okay, so I gotta make sure I finish this ideally before reset happens, right? I guess it doesn't matter. It's not the same as plat reset, I don't think. Okay. Mighty Uka, we need you dead, dude. For sure need you dead. That's actually okay, because I bet Sifi can res him faster than or give him more turn meter than if he would have just already stayed alive. Dang. Extra turn. You're getting all kinds of extra turn. That's a, that's a high speed Mountain King. You don't see very often. Forty-eight thousand damage, not too bad. He has some big HP pool though. Is he in regen plus immortal? Is he healed twice? Maybe he's in bolster. I didn't notice that at the beginning. But there we go. He's dead now. Doesn't matter what he's in. It's irrelevant now. Lock everybody out. Pythion does nothing now. Good old OP warlord. Uh, Mithrala took her turn. We'll kill her. Use A2 on everybody else. Doesn't kill anybody. 
It's okay, though. All right, so here we go. It is 1 o'clock now. Should be able to finish this up. There we go. Tier placement is in progress. Let's see how we did. 135,000 gold bars waiting for gold one. We, there's no way we didn't make it, right? 1708, 7,800 points. That is crazy. That is so many points. Maybe we can just do a tagger read. Okay, there we go. Gold one, baby. I'd say it's a pretty successful takeover. Went from going to silver four to now we are in gold one. Beautiful. We'll leave this defense up for a little while. See if my attacks it. Should definitely help him get up to gold three. Relatively easy, to be honest. Um, but with that said, guys, thank you all very much for watching the video. Hopefully, you took something from it. Hopefully, you all enjoyed. If you want to enter for an account giveaway for the uh, 3v3 takeover giveaway, just comment 3v3 help down below. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you all in the next video.